Hello everyone, this is Anushka Jain, your tutor for uh, business and technology subject. I am a chartered accountant and also an ACCA. I would like to hear about you, where you are in your educational journey, what you do, where are you from. So can we have a quick uh, introduction please? You can use the chat box facility for the introduction. So Om has given exams for class 12. Yeshu is from Kolkata and pursuing BCom. Okay. Others? Mahi, Paris, Tushar, Zakia. Okay. Mahi. Paris is Rishita. Okay. Uh, Paris, from the next time it, uh, when you log into the class, please use your uh, correct name, Rishita. Yeah. Zakia, what do you do? No issues, Rashida. You can use it. Uh, you use your own account from the uh, login ID from your own account. Um, okay. So thanks you. Th thanks a lot for that quick introduction. I am, uh, as I said, your tutor for this uh, subject. I would also like to know where you are in your ACCA journey. Is this your first paper or you have already appeared for uh, ACCA any of the exams before at the knowledge level? Okay. So I understand Mahi and uh, Dashita have their first papers as BT. Others? Zakia also says first paper. Zakia, can you introduce me? Uh, what do you do? Where you are in your educational journey? Where are you from? Okay. We have Aman in the class. Aman, can you please quickly introduce yourself? We have just started off. Okay, yes, yeah, so you are uh, learning both F2 and uh, BT currently. Great. Okay, so for those of you who have BT as their first paper, don't worry. We will also be covering how the exams happen. You know, you'll be uh, appearing for computer based examinations. So do not worry, we will cover each and every aspect of the exam in the class itself, not just the curriculum, but also how the exams are so that you do not panic before the exam. You are well versed with how the format is and how you should be appearing for it. Okay, so let me tell you that uh, I did my ACCA in 2009 in my advanced financial management paper so i uh, want you also to you know walk in that path were you such a niche in first? We are not starting off a particular chapter currently. We just I want to give you about the subject. What you have, I lost my internet connection in between. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I hope we can continue now. Uh, yes. So in this paper and uh, in this uh, deck, I'm going to give you an introduction about your paper. Look, you need to know any understand the subject that okay so let's move on so overall aim of the syllabus see you are entering into the business world now so all of the discussion around the subject is going to see how business and its environment function in tandem and how different aspects different stakeholders affect the functioning of a business 
okay so there are going to be different roles of different people you will be learning about the role of directors shareholders you will be learning about how the economic of a country affects the business and its performance okay that is the overall aim of the syllabus brought forward knowledge there is nothing you need to worry about that you should have known this from before no we are going to start a fresh there is no brought forward for this paper this is one of the first papers at the knowledge level so you can rest assured that everything will be new and covered freshly for you so link with other exams how and where business technology stands in the acca scheme of things so first let's understand business technology is in your foundation level at the acca and you are going to understand different the foundation for the strategic business leader paper which is at the final level okay the strategic level of acc exam so please understand that it is a really important paper you are going to be introduced to so many new aspects so many new concepts in this paper which is going to help you at the strategic level itself so remain focused keep asking questions if if you do not understand anything you can pause me at any time and ask me if you want me to repeat any point you want me to explain something again we can do that but do feel confident in whatever you are studying you should be 100% sure of what you have learned because this paper is has direct link with the strategic business leader at the final level okay any queries still here are we good to go ahead great you want me to slow down if you feel that we are going very fast that also if you can tell me that let's pause a little let's spend some time more we can do that let's have a very interactive class it's not a one to one class it should be both ways please keep telling me that this is where you feel you are not very confident and we will work upon it okay others are we good to go ahead any queries we have just discussed what the foundation of this paper is and where it is in the acca scheme of things and how it is going to help you in your future okay yashu next now comes the most important question as to how the cbes look how the computer based examination look okay so firstly how many of you have ever appeared for a computer based examination anywhere be it your class 12 11 your bcom anywhere you have appeared for computer based examinations before rashita says it's the first time she'll be appearing for a cbe same with yashu others please do participate in the class okay yes no at least that much you can type i know it's morning time you might be feeling a little sleepy and that too on a weekend but please buck up you are going to enjoy the classes that's for sure okay so uh one of aman says he has appeared for uh, a computer based examination and satya kosh who has joined us recently is also saying he has appeared for an entrance exam satya kosh uh, you have joined a little late we were introducing ourselves before you joined so uh, i would really appreciate if you could type in your short introduction in the chat box so that i can understand where you are in your educational journey where you are from and if you have appeared for any of the acca papers till now okay so in the meanwhile let's understand what the cbe for acca is going to look like it is going to be little different from your standard examinations okay but let me tell you one thing it is a good paper it is a multiple choice question based paper so you need to be very alert you know if you can crack just one requirement of that question you are going to get the mark okay so let's understand how the paper is going to look like so questions are displayed on a monitor you will be using a computer for the exam so questions will be displayed on the monitor candidates have to enter their answer directly on the computer you do not have to write on a piece of paper and then upload it it's not like that you have to directly enter the answer on the computer screen okay you will have 2 hours to complete the examination okay and Come, uh, the best part of 
demand examinations which is uh, you know that you must be knowing that business technology is an on demand paper okay so when you sit for the on demand examination you will get provisional result notification immediately result notification immediately before leaving the examination room so you'll get to know whether you have you'll get a fair idea of whether you have passed or not successful in the examination okay the cbe licensed center uploads the result to the acca the your page as proof of the candidate's performance within 72 hours so within 3 hours you will get your proper final results they can check their exam status on the acca website by logging into my acca so i believe you all have created your my acca account have you or have you not my acca is the basis of your acca journey you are going to use it even after you become an acca okay so do create your acca uh, account rashita please do create it asap right after the class do create your account on my acca you will get the uh, link on the google just type in my acca and you will get the link and you should create your account with the credentials you must have received by uh, registering for the exam others have you created your acca uh, account my acca account okay got great so i understand most of you have created uh, barring two or three most of you have created those who have not please do create your acca my acca account okay you're going to get your results you're going to get your payment uh, receipts the fees which you pay all of it displayed in just one portal so it's very comprehensive do create it okay and another thing have you all bought your books okay yashu has placed rashita has ordered great so we are going to use bpp study material and bpp practice kit in our class so i understand most of you have ordered and you will receive it within a week maximum because that's how much it takes so once you receive the books you know have them properly um, we will constantly keep on using the practice kit uh, when i will give you the homework so use them we are going to cover the study material in the class itself okay so sometimes i might ask you to refer to particular pages but that's all L everything will get covered within the class okay so you are well versed you don't have to read through a lot of material refer to the class notes refer to the pr kit and sometimes references of the study material and that will be it okay so we are through with how the cbe exam will happen now what are the let's understand what are the benefits cbe is offering you so you have the flexibility benefit as in you can demand the exam you can sit for the exam any time you want in fact please understand once you are through with my classes you can demand for the exam sit for it right after the classes so you know when everything is fresh in your head when you would have revised of course give your some self some time for revision and then sit for the exam that's the best thing you can expect you know just finished with the classes you're fresh you have everything in your head you can sit for the exam directly okay so that's the flexibility cbe is offering you so it is a good thing it is a bane okay resets okay if you are not able to clear which is very unlikely i'm telling you because if you are you know regular in my classes keep on asking uh, queries if you are through with everything confident in whatever i have taught you it won't happen but god forbid if it happens that you are not able to qualify for the exam in the first attempt you can reset for these first seven modules at any time and there is no restriction on the number of times a candidate can sit for cbe you can sit for n number of times there is no restriction but i hope it doesn't come to that be regular in the classes study along work very hard you can do it in the first attempt itself okay it's no fun to give an exam again you have to study everything again so it becomes really really daunting task let's not go that route study very hard in the first attempt itself so that when you are sitting for the exam right after the classes you are through with it 
okay and let me tell you some very good news the pass percentage of this paper people who are actually getting to pass this is approximately 80 to 84 percent and that is the data from the acca website but how does that happen does it happen just because the paper is easy it's not like that okay the paper is technical you will have to learn a very you know a lot of models mental laws metrics and i'll keep on teaching you all that stuff paper is technical but the thing is if you are through uh, if you listen to the tutor properly if you're regular in the class it is not a very difficult task to clear off in the first step okay so the pass percentage is 80 to 84 percent in this paper instant feedback as i told you before you're going to get a provisional result notification right after you are done when you have submitted the paper okay as the computer displays the results at the end of the cbe so cbe is computer based examination are we clear till now you now know you have got 2 hours for the paper okay yes saman you have a query you can type it in the box and let me know tell me no queries you raised your hand i thought you might have a query no issues even if you have anything you can just type it in the exam uh, in the chat box uh, how can we book the exam so you can book the exam through your my acca account uh, for details you can al always connect to the team if you want uh, help in the steps you can connect with the vgld team they will guide you on how to book the exam okay sure if you have any questions here please do let me know or we will move ahead to the next slide okay so we will move to the next slide now now let's understand how do we need to appear for the exams right you what skills do you need how the questions are going to look like so we will understand that okay so business technology is a 2 hour computer based exam okay aman has a question does bt contain calculation questions see aman uh, it is more of a qualitative paper rather than a quantitative paper where you have to perform the calculations it is a qualitative paper overall but there can be some questions where you need to perform little bit of calculations okay so that in that case you will be given with multiple options like for example the answer is maybe 12 so in the drop down list you will have 12 14 16 18 like that and you'll have to select the option the correct number from that list that is how bt is okay so it's more of qualitative bits of quantitative okay so yes coming back to how the paper is going to look like there are going to be two sections section a and section b okay so section a carries 76 marks how it is split let's understand that so there are going to be 30 two mark objective test questions so each question is going to carry two marks okay and 16 one mark objective test questions. so by objective test we mean that there it is going to be multiple choice okay you have to select the option but understand that within section a there are going to be two types of objective test questions one of them one category will be carrying two marks each and one category will be carrying one mark each so obviously the two mark questions will be a little more comprehensive and a little difficult but i'm sure uh, if you read the requirement of the question correctly if you're through with the classes it's going to be an easy task but yes understand that there is no partial marking in section a because there is going to be only one correct answer if you select that answer you will get the mark if you do not your mark is gone be it two mark be it one mark question both of them do you have to appear that choose the correct answer only to get the full mark or you will get zero in that so 30 two mark questions and 16 one mark questions so basically 60 plus 16 that makes the 76 mark component of section a okay 
and section B is going to contain six questions, four mark each. Six questions are four mark each. And please understand, all the areas are equally testable in exam. There is no special or fam uh, you know, uh, likable area of the examination. No, it's not like that. It can come from any area of the syllabus. It's going to contain four mark questions, six of them. Okay, that is how section B is structured. We are going to see what type of questions are going to come in section A or section B. So do not hurry over there. I have it covered in my slides. But that is how the overall structure of the exam paper is going to look like. Section A, 76 marks. Section B, 24 marks. That makes up your 100 mark exam. And you have two hours for the paper. Okay. So can you do a little bit calculation for me? Uh, two hours means what? 120 minutes, right? You have got 100 marks. So can you tell me how much time you can spend per mark in the paper? You have got 120 minutes, 100 marks. So if you have to do your planning of the paper, how much time you can spend on each question? How will you do it? How much time can you spend for each mark? Right, Mahi. It's going to be 1.2 minutes. Okay, 120 divided by 100. So if you are appearing for a one mark question, maximum you can take one hour 20, uh, one minute 20 seconds and same goes for uh, two mark questions 2.4 minutes maximum okay so you need to time see i'm not asking you to time each and every question then you will use more time timing the question but overall you should know that by the time i have completed let's say section a i should have this many minutes left for part B, section B of the paper. I don't want you to, you know, struggle for time to appear for the uh, questions. Okay. So that is why I'm asking you to plan this. By When we will be studying along now, you will get used to this time. And I'm uh, telling you, you are, if you are good, if you have studied the paper well, you will be able to complete it within this 1.2 minutes stand, standard. Okay. Is that clear to all? Any questions? You know how the exam structure is going to look like. It is going to be containing two sections. Each and every question is compulsory. There is no option. Uh, get away from that you know, uh, idea where you used to get uh, optional questions in your exam. There is not going to be any option in the ACCA papers. All the questions are mandatory. Okay. If you have any questions, please do raise it. We are going very slow so that you all feel confident. Okay, great. Next, what to expect in section A. Okay, now we will go in very detail. What type of questions will come, how many marks it will have. Let's go in a little bit more detail. See, why I'm telling you it, all this thing in the first class itself is basically why are we studying? We have to appear for the exam and score the highest marks, right? That is why we are studying. So if you know the idea of how the exam is going to look like, it will become very easy for you to understand and to learn the concept. Because if I don't tell you all this, you, will, you might start learning the definitions and everything, which I don't want you to. I want you to understand the concept. If you have understood the concept, you should be able to appear for the uh, questions. Okay, so that is the reason I'm telling you all of this before we start off with the main uh, chapters. Okay, so what to expect in section A? Multiple choice question, which we commonly call MCQ. Here, you need to choose one correct answer from two to three options. See, standard, I think you all might know, normally MCQs have four options. But for the one mark questions, I told you, right, the first section contains two mark and one mark questions. For the one mark questions, you will have two or three options only. Okay. So two to three options and you have to select one of the correct option. Okay. And for the two mark question, you have to select one correct option from four options. So that is a standard MCQ, right? So for the one mark question, you will have two to three options. And for the four, uh, for the two mark questions, you will have four options. Okay. 
see a uh, marks will always be given alongside the question so you need not worry you have to identify whether it is a one mark or two mark marks will always be given for the question okay then multiple response so that in the first category we were selecting just one correct option right now multiple response these are a type of multiple choice question where you need to select more than one answer from a number of given topics very careful you might not have studied these type of questions before you will be having to select multiple correct options the question will specify how many answers need to be selected so the question will tell you that the answer can be is of two options like that you will have to select select the two correct options okay so you will be given that it is important to read the requirement carefully i am going to repeat this n number of times during our sessions read the requirement carefully in fact we are going to make it a habit that we read the requirement first what is asked for in the question and then we are going to read the question okay i'm going to get into this uh, in some uh, more detail in the times to come but yes read the requirement carefully you know people see a standard type of question oh yes i know the answer they don't even read what is required sometimes there are negative questions you know what is not the correct answer right what is not true if you do not read those statements if you do not read the requirement you will definitely go on to select the incorrect answer so do not jump just because you have no a familiar question the requirement may be different okay so always read the requirement carefully in these type of questions you will be given that select two of the correct options okay so in mcq you had to choose one correct answer in multiple response you are going to select multiple correct answers is that okay i hope it's fine still questions you can always use the chat box then multiple response matching okay so now I, i hope you can make out what will happen here there will be multiple responses you have to join you know something we used to do as children match the uh, correct statements right so this is what you are going to do here this question type requires you to identify which of two or more categories each item in a list belongs to okay for example a question might provide you a list of controls and ask you to identify for each control whether it is a general control or an application control don't worry about these words are general application you will be studying these so don't worry it's just that you will have to identify each of the parts of the question and tell whether this is a general or an application control like that okay be clear in your head section a will contain one mark and two mark questions the type of questions could be multiple choice questions where you have to select one correct answer multiple response questions where you will have to select multiple correct answers and thirdly multiple response matching okay so two or more categories you have to select the out of the given options am i clear till now any questions you want me to repeat any type of question what it might look like in fact i'm going to show you specimen exam also you know just like that we will hover over the paper how it looks like okay aman is clear others okay clear now that was about section a of the exam great om and yashu you are clear great we also have krishnam in the class now uh, welcome to the class krishnam we have started off uh, with a brief introduction about each other and we are now seeing how the exam structure is going to look like okay now we are heading to section b okay so we studied right section a and section b so now we have covered section a how the questions are going to look like now we are going to see how section b questions are going to look like okay please remember how many questions were there here in section b do you remember six questions yes mahi yes krishna we will you are going to have six questions of four marks each right so these are going to be little technical 
you might even have to read some stuff you know within the question they will give you some theory part then they will ask you interpret these questions okay so section b questions will include six multitask questions these will also use objective test questions okay so they, they are going to have multiple options here as well but a wider range of question types will be used in section b questions okay in the first part we just had three types of questions but in section b there are going to be a wider variety of questions you may see some or all of the following types of questions in your exam okay so let's see what these look like multiple response questions with more than four options for example choose two items from six or eight options okay so imagine you will have to read through that big list and then select the correct answer and maybe it could be two or three like that okay so two from six or four options from four correct options from eight options okay so that is how the you know it is common understanding if you are if they are giving you multiple bigger number of options the probability of selecting the correct answer goes down right so that is why that is how they are making section b a little difficult you will have more options to choose from okay so that is multiple response questions similar to what we had in uh, section a but here the number of options are going to increase it could be six options it could be eight options okay then ga comes gap fill questions must have been favorites as we were children fill in the blanks right so where you need to complete a paragraph by filling the gaps which is fill, fill in the blanks that appear in the text do you expect you'll have to write the correct answer no it's not like that good news responses they are to be selected by clicking on the gap and then selecting the correct response from the drop down menu okay so we will be selecting the correct option within the list of uh, options given in the drop down so that is how you will be filling in the blanks in the acca bt paper got it then multiple response matching like we did study in the section a part where candidates select responses according to a grid of choices okay so like match the lines we used to study as children that is the same as multiple response matching new type hot spot questions okay so here you will have to clock on the relevant part of the symbol or diagram these are different type of questions when i show you the question in the specimen exam you will understand okay so there may be a number of boxes where you are required to select the boxes that apply so these are similar to your multiple choice questions where you have multiple options and you have to select the correct ones these are similar to that okay but the boxes they are going to be of different layout and that is how they are known as hot spot questions nothing to worry same you have to select the options okay and finally aman had a question where we have number based questions so for that we have number entry question where you will need to calculate a value and enter it into a box okay so such questions will not be common in bt so earlier it was fpt now it has become bt so sometimes you will find the reference of bt oblique fpt it's, it means one and the same thing okay so these questions are not very common in bt paper as much of the syllabus covers qualitative topics rather than quantitative but even if it comes you will have to enter the number in a box that is how number entry questions look like and they can come in section b okay so in section b questions see i told you right in the section a there is no partial marking either you get the correct answer or you get the incorrect answer you get full mark you don't get anything right but in section b there will be partial marking okay very important section b you will get partial marking so in a multiple response question for example which requires you to select two items from six right for two marks and if you are selecting any one of them you know you selected two options one of the option is correct and one of the option is not you will get one mark if you if one of your answers which is selected is correct have you understood this part in section b there will be partial marking okay if you select one of the correct answer you will still get 
the proportionate marks. So if the question was for two marks and you have to select two options, but you could select only one correct option, you will get one mark. Are we clear till here? Getting yeses from everyone, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how your paper is going to look like. So this is the ebook section where I can access my ebooks. This is the BN Business Technology PR kit. Okay, so I will show you one of the mock exams. I hope you all can see my uh, Chrome screen, right? You can see the mock exam on your screens. Please type in a yes if you can. Great. Thank you. So I'll show you how the mock exam looks like. So time allowed is two hours. Section A, how many questions will be there? 46 questions, right? 32 mark questions and 16 one mark questions. So there are going to be 46 questions in section A. And section B, you're going to get six questions. So all of them must be attempted. That is what the instructions say. And then come to this part where the questions actually start. Okay. See, here you are given with two statements. Okay, we are just analyzing the type of questions for the time being. See, it, it says it is of two marks, right? So remember, we studied two mark questions, how they are going to look like. So here you are given with four options. As I told you, you will be given with four options and you have to select one correct answer, right? Section A, B it, please remember these things, very important for your exam. In section A, B it a one mark, B it a two mark question. You just have to select one correct answer, okay? That is how it is going to be like, unless it, the question tells you specifically that you have to select these many correct answers, okay? So let's see what the question is going to look like. So they have given you two options, private companies, two statements, and you have to identify, are these statements true or false? So how many options will you select here? One, two, three, four, how many correct options will you have here? Nothing is given. There's going to be only one correct answer. And that is also, if you select that one correct option only, then you will get the full two marks. It, it is not going to have any partial mark, right? So these are the type of questions here in section A, right? You all are correct. So now, see, there are three options. I told you for the one mark question, right? You will have two or three options. So here you have got three options and you have to select one of them. So it is going to carry one mark. So likewise, this is how the paper is going to look like. Two mark, one mark questions, mix of all of them. Okay, now, this is a big question, okay? Even in part A, you can expect some theoretical aspect and then they will ask you the question. So this is just the con content of the question, okay? Now comes, which combination of activity gives Mrs. Gray the highest utility? So it is a pick list, okay? So it's not a computer examination, otherwise this would have been activated. You will have to select the correct option and put it here. 
okay you will have to use the drop down facility here and use this list to pick the correct answer so that is how pick list works am i clear which combination of activity gives mrs gray the highest utility so they have given you four combination of activities like swimming trips one badminton sessions five so this is one combination of the activities likewise we have multiple combinations from the pick list which is not activated here because this is a text book here you will have to select the correct combination okay am i clear this is a little different type of a question but yes it is to be selected from the drop down am i clear if you want me to re explain this type of a question clear okay great here again two more question four options you have to select one see here as i told you unless the question specifically tells you select multiple options you just have to select one right look at this question which two would marge come recognize from her workplace two options see they have even helped you out they have given it to you in bold you have to select two options here okay so multiple response be careful in these type of questions you will only score correct marks only if you select both the correct options okay so it's very very tricky now here which of the statement is false you know normally what happens students get very excited they know the correct answer they will just select which is which of the statement is correct without if you do not read the requirement that it is asking you to select the false option you will definitely make a mistake here so be very clear here sometimes they will you know what they will do they will say which of the following statement is not true what does not true mean it means false right so they will try to trick your minds don't get tricked be very careful when you are reading the requirement and choose the correct option okay so false and not true are one and the same thing okay again a pick list type of a question so what will happen no when you click on this drop down in the exam no here they have given it to you here in uh, this in this way when you will be uh, in the exam when you click this drop down these things will appear in the list of options there okay and then you will have to select the correct option that is how the pick list questions work which of the following is not an offense relating to money laundering so out of these three will be offenses related to money laundering yes and one of them will not be an offense related to money laundering so you'll have to select the offense which is not related to money laundering okay be very careful when i'm discussing the exam type okay because that is going to be applicable for all your chapters so this is a basic class for the coming chapters see here in the context of uh tuckman's model of team development which of the following sequences of stages is correct so we will be uh, learning about this model so here you'll have to select multiple options see uh two mark questions you'll have to select from each of these pick lists so that is how the questions will look like so do not think it is a very easy paper i just uh, be very lazy throughout the session and then finally go for it it should not be like that the question types are different you need to be very well versed with the toppings only then you will be able to correct uh, you will be able to choose the correct op options in the exam okay okay so we will quickly move on to section b now section a that is how it is going to look like overall yes so after 46 questions see 46 questions in section a after all of that is done they will start off section b now come section b so all six questions are compulsory and must be attempted okay mintzberg defined three categories okay for each of the following managerial roles select the correct category from the above list okay so for the uh, these will be the pick list okay three options will be there for all of these three uh, all of these six sub questions and you have to select the correct ones okay so that is how you are going to get the marks so this is of three marks okay now can you do the proportionate 
marks here so they have given you six sub parts right so each of them they will carry 0.5 marks so if you select negotiator correct answer spokesperson incorrect answer you will still get 0.5 marks there right because you have selected the proportionate correct answers so you will get proportionate correct marks is that okay that is how section b questions are look, going to look like these are going to have some theoretical comprehensive content then you will have to choose the correct answer okay so similarly here they have given you one mark so total four marks so you have to select these are all partial marking uh, eligible so here now they will give you a story before frank gloria helen so they will give you different type of storyline see answers they will not ask i mean the question will not be very specific it will try to link some model which we will study in our classes with the content which they have given before the question and then you'll have to understand yes this model is applicable here let's answer the questions using that model they will not give in the question under this model what all options are applicable it's not going to be like that they have given you a situation these are all going to be situation based questions okay read the situation very carefully but always remember before reading the situation read the requirement first so that you know what is asked in the question you don't read do a story reading in exam series story reading in exam is not possible you don't have sufficient time so first read the question you know what is asked and then read the theory part the situation in the question am i clear uh, applies to all the questions b section a b section b wherever you see the question is very long read the requirement first what way you will have to do later on and then read the situation that is standard okay and let me tell you this this concept which i'm telling you read the requirement first and then read the content is going to be helpful throughout your acca journey you know strategic business leader paper which i'm telling you has a linkage with this paper it has only one question of 100 marks can you understand one question of 100 mark i mean just one question they will give you a very big story expanding across seven eight pages and then there will be multiple questions based on that same story so first if you go on to read that story like a story you will lose out a lot of time okay so first you should always read what will be required of you and then you can you know underline the important things in the paper yes this will be asked this has been asked so i'm going to be ready with the answer okay that is how you should appear and make it a habit for all the acca papers am i clear so that is the mantra read the requirement first and then the main part of the question okay see again a story and then they will ask you these are all pick list type of questions you have to sell here in the pick list you will be displayed with these four options you will have to select the correct option okay we don't have any hotspot questions here yeah this is a hotspot question the following are qualities that might be found in accounting information select four from the list that accounting information should have if it is to be uh, useful so as i told you hotspot hot questions they are similar to multiple response questions okay so you'll have to select four here so they have given you eight options you'll have to select the four correct answers from here okay again a pick list type of a question okay so that is all that was your first mock exam which we have done not very in depth just to understand how the question format looks like can i come back to our deck now or you want me to revisit any part of the question paper which you want me to explain how the questions are are we good to come back to the deck now now everyone with me right you i hope you have not strayed away you are still in the class Okay. Only yeses from Yashu, Yeshu, and uh, Aman. Others, you still there in the class? 
Okay, please be interactive. Otherwise, if I keep on talking, I even I'll get bored. So if you keep on talking, yes, ma'am, we are there. <laughs> I'll also find the energy to keep on continuing. Okay, so I'm sure you will become more comfortable uh, as the time goes. It's okay. It's your first class. Take your time, but yes, please understand. We are. This is how we are going to have our classes. It's going to be very interactive. Okay. And that is the benefit of uh, taking live classes, right? Otherwise, you could have taken recorded classes. But since you are there in the live classes, use that uh, keyboard. Keep on, uh, you know, talking with me. Okay. Now I have shown you how the questions look like, how many marks it has, how what you have to do. But now, what is important is how you should appear for the questions in general. Okay. So for section A, so what we have done is laid down the guidelines. See, these are not rules; these are just guidelines to guide you how you can appear for the questions. No strict requirement that you have to adopt these, uh, you know, statements in your exam. No, it's just for you to guide you that if you adopt this approach, you will be in a better off position. So that is what we have done. Section A and section B separately. I have told you these. Uh, these are the steps you can follow. Okay. So step one, skim read all the MCQs. So how many questions do we have in section A? We have got forty six questions, right? Skim read all the MCQs and identify what appear to be easier questions. Okay. See, there are forty six questions. I'm sure you will also realize that by the time you have completed your syllabus, these are very easy topics. If a question comes from this topic, I am going to score that mark, right? So when when you get the paper, when you start off with your examination, skim read. Skim read means what? Very you know, uh, very quickly you read through all the MCQs. You identify a easy question, mark the correct answer, move on. Okay. So that is what you should do. Skim read all the MCQs and identify what appear to be the easier questions. Okay. Attempt each question. Do you think uh, the order in which you are appearing the question is important? Is it like you have to answer the first question first, second question next? Is it important? No, the order is not important. You can appear in any order you want. You want to appear for the forty-sixth question first. You are free to do that. Okay, but the idea is that you should appear each questions. Correct, Yeshu. Yes. So Yashu says we can flag that question and come back later to it later or come back to it later. Okay, that is how the approach should be. Skim through all the questions, mark the correct uh, easier ones, and move on. If you find any difficult question, you can look at it later on. Okay. So attempt each question, starting with the easier questions identified in step one. Okay, read the question thoroughly. Do not jump. Do not get super excited. Yes, I've got a good easy question. Read the question thoroughly. You may prefer to work out the answer before looking at the options. See, there are always two approaches in multiple choice questions. You can you are free to use any one you like. And what are the two approaches? See, what is the first approach? You read the question without looking at the option. You know this is what, this should be the in the answer list. Okay, so you have not looked at the options in your mind. You know that this is going to be the correct answer. Okay, that is the first approach. Second approach, you read the question and you read the options together. You do not apply your brain till now. You will think later after you have read through all the options. You will say yes, this should be the correct option. Okay, so there is other two approaches which any student can adopt. Okay, some might feel comfortable. You know, let's first read the question and without looking at the options, what does my brain say that this should be the correct answer? Okay, so that is how you will select the option. In the second approach, you will read the options together with the question and then say yes, this option should be the correct option. Okay, so adopt the method that works best for you. There is no harm in any of the two approaches. You like the first approach, you use that. If not, then you can use the second approach. You are free to do that. It's upon you. You know, when you keep on practicing, now you will find out which approach is the best for you. Okay, like for me, I'll tell you like what I find comfortable in my head. I should know before looking at the option that this should be there in the option list. If it is there, I will quickly select that option because it is saving me the time of thinking through all the questions options. 
what i do is ad adopt the first approach that is i know in my head before i look at the options that this should be there in the option list i'll go and select it if i find it if not then i am in a problem because then i'll have to think that yes you know this uh, could be the options i'll have to think more but if i know the answer before and i can quickly choose the correct option right so you can know which op uh, which approach is uh, better suitable for you and answer the questions accordingly okay and the step 3 so what have we done till now we have skim read all the questions we have identified the easier ones we have answered them now in step 3 read the options and see if one matches your answer be careful with numerical questions as the distractors so what are distractors you know so you have two options okay maybe uh, very similar wordings if numerical similar numbers if word similar words and they will try to confuse you that is why they are known as distractors so what the examiner does na they do it intentionally to confuse you so they will give very close words in the option list so that if you are doing it very quickly na you might end up selecting the distractor which is the incorrect option as your final answer okay so these lead to the common errors keep your mind and eyes wide open okay do not fall in the trap of the examiner by selecting the distractor they will show you something similar of the answer and you might even end up selecting that if you are not very careful okay so check that your calculation is correct have you followed the requirement exactly have you included every stage of the calculation okay are we clear till here So now you understand no how examiners can play smart with you don't fall in their trap be alert on your own okay so step 4 okay mahi step 4 you may find that none of the options match your answer so now you are in a glitch what has happened now none of the options i thought of is there in the list so that is a problem situation what you should do in that case so first three steps were when you knew the answer you have selected it but now the answer which you thought should be the answer is not there in the list so it obviously your thought process was incorrect in that case what you should do reread the question to ensure that you understood it correctly and are answering the requirement as i told you read the requirement first what they are asking you to do okay Reread the requirement. Maybe you have read the option. Uh, I mean, the question incorrectly. It was asking you select the false one. You have selected the true one. Think in your mind. So that is possible. Eliminate any obviously wrong answers. Now what we are doing is we are going the back step approach. Rather than selecting the correct option first, what we are doing is we are eliminating the obviously wrong answers. You know. So let's say uh, a very hypothetical question. Uh, question: The question is, you have to know which all are the directions, maybe north, south, east, west, like that. Okay. So you have to identify the option which have the directions in the options, right? So north, south, east, and west are the correct options. But in the exam, you are given with let's say north, east. and maybe some two different words which you are very clear are definitely not directions okay so in that case maybe like not cat dog south that is what the four options are so what you will do you should definitely eliminate the obviously wrong answers that yes these cannot be directions right consider which of the remaining answers is the most likely to be correct and select the option so what you have done you have eliminated eliminated dog and cat what are you left with north and south right so in that case you need to select the most likely correct option if the question if the answer which you thought is not there in the list this is the approach you should follow take the back step approach eliminate the obviously incorrect options and then select the correct one okay so in this way do you know what you do you reduce your probability of selecting the incorrect option right you know that this cannot be the answer why spend my time on it eliminate it and then focus on the remaining two and then think what uh, which of the correct option is more applicable to the situation okay that is how it should be step 
if you are still unsure you have tried everything but you still cannot find out the correct option make a note and continue to the next question rather than banging your head on that one question move on okay please understand that the clock is ticking you will have just 1.2 minutes per mark on an average okay sometimes some question will not take that much time and you will save some time in some questions but overall on an average you just have 1.2 minutes per mark right so do not bang your head on just one question if you can't answer it move on right so make a note and continue to the next question am i clear and finally in step 6 now i am going to give you some bonus information here be very careful revisit the unanswered questions so what you will do you will leave all the questions which you cannot think of and complete the paper and you will have some unanswered question revisit them when you come back to a question after a break you may find out you are able to answer it correctly straight away you know sometimes it happens that how that's how the brain functions it sometimes doesn't give you the information at the time you asked for it but later on it you will find that it is there in your head right you have studied everything you should definitely be able to answer it right so now you might be able to answer it correctly straight away if you are still unaware make a guess you are not penalized for incorrect answers okay please understand there is no negative marking in acca foundation level papers if you do not know the answer close your eyes think what should be the right answer and go for it do not leave any question unanswered that will be a very wrong thing to do because now you know that there is no negative marking in a lot of professional exams there are negative markings and people choose not to select the answer if they are not very confident but in acca there is no negative marking select the correct option and move on no if you do not know still select one of the options okay so are we clear in in the head that we will be selecting the option no matter what if i do not know the answer still also i will select options not be the answer definitely so out of the remaining three i will select am i clear till here okay aman says yes others great so i've got a yes from everyone very good you all are very responsive i am very sure you are able to follow me okay so that is how you are going to approach the section a so after sensitive extensive uh, practice and revision of the mcqs you may see something i've told you you may find that you recognize the question when you sit in the exam you'll get very happy excited be that the detail some a question a little so they detail a little or the be different if the question seems familiar still read the requirement okay do select the answer assume that it is either it could be a different question although it is okay so you need the entire 120 minutes now comes what you for type questions the recommended approach to ask questions in is right as i told you on you there is a scenario there is going to be a situation each multitask question is what multitask question runs to be around 300 quest story which was there help those for different people there will be a situation can feel daunting important to know 
you are looking for the scenario so what will you do first understand the requirement of the task first read the requirement and then understand the requirement required of you and read the scenario this is our approach okay so what you can do what errors i have listed that here is easy to requirement of a question as i read it as true when it has asked false so something similar can happen giving the to the highest value okay but asked if the so sometimes these type of errors can happen if you are not just remember 120 minutes keep your mind open all the time okay the task think about the text i told you right when you are reading you will realize that these questions really particular model flows matrix the, that is, so you should immediately think uh, you know the thing i about mendelos matrix and how it can be applied in okay so when you read the scenario you will now focus read the question if you would have read scenario first and then read the question now you know that this is what we asked you will now be more alert through the scenario that right that questions right you know what has been asked focus when you read the story okay manage telling you constantly as minutes per mark okay after section section is of what 66 so 76 into 1 uh, should be 91 Okay, should give only ten minutes to the first to the first section. Okay. Remaining twenty, right? One twenty nine minutes. You should leave B. So approximately half section B, one and a half hour. A. That is how you should have it. In. I have to complete the question this much time. Okay. And it, do not. Sir, the questions in any order. Play with your exam strength. This particular uh, topic is easy. I will answer first and then move on. So section B, it's nothing new. I told you for uh, how to attempt the questions. It's just that be alert, read the requirement first, and then the scenario. That is the gist of what you need to do for section B. Am I clear? Any questions till here? great rashita so that is about the introduction of business technology paper okay i have told you how the questions look like i have showed you a mock exam also okay so 76 and 24 marks that's how the split is going to be right this table will be very helpful 32 mark objective questions and 16 one mark objective questions and six four mark multiple task questions so that is how the paper break up is going to look like 2 hours long 1.5 hours for section a half an hour for section b that is how you should split your time no negative marking select the option even if you do not know the correct answer am i clear okay and i have told you what all the different type of questions look like it's not like only one answer will be correct sometimes they will ask you to select two correct options so that is also possible Here, yeah. so with this, let's take a small break of ten minutes. We will catch up after the break and start off with the first chapter of the business technology paper. Okay, so it's eleven sixteen now. We will catch up around eleven thirty. Okay. I hope you all are back from the break and are feeling fresh. now we are going to start off with chapter 1 which is business organization and their stakeholders okay so what how, you must have heard about these terms in your class 11 or 12 like uh, in your business studies paper what business organization is who all the stakeholders are we are going to With these topics now with more granular details, okay, something which is going to be helpful for the exam, right? 
so purpose of business organizations now please keep the sessions very interactive i want you to participate i want you to know what your thoughts are about each of these topics which we are going to cover okay so that if you are incorrect i can correct you if you are correct then it's a boon right it's a plus point for all of us so now we will understand what the purpose of business organization is right first before we get into that what do you understand by an organization what do you think what is an organization please type it krishnan says it's a group of people okay you are not you are right others please share your thoughts what is an organization parase uh, rashita says a group of people working towards common goal very good definition now you have so krishnam said a few things now uh, rashita has improvised on it she has, she says that there are these are a group of people working towards a common goal yes so even people walking on the street they are a group of people right but they they are not an organization so when people come together and want to work on a common goal then they are said to have formed an organization so yes om you are also correct so that is what an organization is others please share your thoughts please keep these sessions interactive okay so that is the overall idea so that is a group of people satyakosh says who form a business see forming a business or not is secondary but yes these are a group of people who have come together to do something together right it could be business or it could not be business it could be something else right zakia says a uh, social arrangement for the controlled performance of the common goal right very good aman giri says community of people who work for certain goals and objectives you all are correct just excuse me for a second please yes so you all are correct in the statement that these are people who are coming together they want to do something on their own they have a common goal right you all are correct now let's see what the book definition is so it is a social arrangement which pursues collective goals yes you are going to have see if you are running a business your aim could be you have to become the leader in the uh, industry you have to maximize your profits these are the different type of goals or organizations have controls so what controls its own performance okay what does it do see if an organization it doesn't have any goal or objective it doesn't know what it has to do but it is there will it be successful in the long run no right so these people when they are coming together they want to control their own performance how do they do that they will do some benchmarking that in this year we should plan to have this much profit let's say one cr of profit we should be making so it will try to control its performance it will try to increase its revenue to that extent it will try to cut down on the cost so that it can reach its goal so it will have to monitor it will have to control its own performance and has a boundary separating it from its environment okay of course as i said there are so many companies you might you must be living in cities where you know that this is a particular company so this is a mall for example now the people working in the mall they are different from the people working in another mall right so they have a boundary which separates it from the environment so even the employees they are separate from the customers in the mall so these this is known as a boundary okay so that is how an organization is separated from from its environment okay so organize their own performance and they have a boundary which separates them from the environment are we clear so that is the organization meaning now please remember there are always going to be some keywords right so that i either bolded out or i highlighted 
so please make sure you read those words right or oh, understand them and that is important okay so what all organizations have in common right it could be a lot of things it could be the objectives right they will have to pursue different objectives goals like for example let's take an example of an e-commerce company like flipkart okay so what will be their objective now let's be very specific and talk about a company you you can uh, you know build your thoughts around this company now we are talking about flipkart now why right? now what will be the objective of flipkart what does it want to do why is it there you must all be using uh, flipkart you must be or if not flipkart you might be using amazon so these are all e-commerce companies so what is their objective is it only to make profits Yes, you say it's to earn profit, but is it only to make profits? A first question: Are these companies then profit? They are currently not. You know, they are expending more to capture. Yes, Amit has pointed out to capture the market share. They want to become the leaders, right? So they are trying to, in you know, make their market share big. So that could also be an objective. It can be to earn profits. It can also be to acquire the market share. Yes. so these are the type of objectives which a company can have now when so now we are talking about flipkart now all the characteristics we are going to discuss it's going to be from the point of view of flipkart now you can imagine how big of a company it is do you think there is only the owners who are working in that company or there are a lot of other people who are coming together and working together yes there are a lot of people so they all specialize in some so they there could be a uh, financial experts there could be marketing experts there could be business experts so these are all the different type of people who have come together to collaborate and work towards the uber objective of the company right so these are the different types of people who have a specialization in their own field coming to together and performing their roles right organizations are keen to achieve good performance and meeting or improving their standards okay now of course now let's talk about the performance of this company so it might have achieved some revenue in 2021 so next year it will try to improve their standards is it like let's say they have done 10000 crores of revenue in one year it will obviously aim for let's say 12000 cr in the next year right so that is how you keep on improving your standards it's not like once the company is set their goals and standards are fixed no they keep on improving they once they meet that objective they will try to improve on it so that is how the organizations are very dynamic their goals and objectives also keep on changing in the long run so flipkart might have started with the objective of selling only books but now it has forayed into so many different aspects right it is providing lifestyle electronics so many different types of products right so that is how these organizations are dynamic and you need to understand that once you enter into your professional careers you will have to keep yourself you will have to become that agile that you can move in tandem with this agility of the organizations okay so that is how we are going to build our examples also in our classes so that you understand how you can link your studies with the uh, your with your professional work which you are going to do when you enter the world right organizations contain formal documented systems and procedures which enable them to control what they do okay so is it like you uh, someone has spoken that this is the rule and that becomes the rule no these are all documented okay so that the same processes can be followed in the same way year on year okay so that the objective doesn't get diluted with the passage of time so these things these processes they are documented like for example take their delivery uh, stream so they have a standard way of delivering the products right so it's not like uh, in uh, one city they are delivering using a different partner and another city they're using a different partner they have a streamlined process that whenever delivery is taking place it has to take place through this procedure right they have their delivery centers like that so that is how the chain is built am i clear so these are all systems and procedures and these are well documented in an organization 
okay next is most organized and get the output that is standard right for uh, be it a uh, manufacturing organization be it service organization each one of them they will have some input like for example let's take the example of uh, itc fmcg products okay let's say they manufacture yp noodles or maybe you can take maggi for example nestle so maggi noodles now this maggi it will definitely have some uh, inputs the raw materials with which it is made so for example maida oil spices they all constitute the input for the company right for nestle so nestle is the company which sells maggi right so it will occupy uh, uh, procure those inputs process them and give the output that is maggi so this is what organizations do what are we studying be alert what are we studying we are studying what organizations have in common what all organizations you can take any organization and you will be able to discuss these points with respect to them okay they will have some objectives they will have different people with different specializations coming together to perform the bigger goal they will want to achieve good performance keep on improving their standards right this will be standard you can think of anything in your head any company and you will be able to apply these points right they will have laid down systems and procedures which will enable them to control what they are expected to do and finally all the companies they will have some input they will do some processing and they will give some output okay are we clear so these are the five characteristics of organizations am i clear clear okay so what you should do now what uh, suggesting you as a friend here what you should do be alert in the class so that you do not have to spend a lot of time in re reading the same things okay so if things enter your head within the class it's a plus point okay you are saving your own time you can do some things of your own luxury in that time to listen to the things in the class very carefully so that it retains okay so these are the characteristics of organizations now understand why do organizations exist why why is the need to create an organization why can't i on my own do what i want to do why do you think or there is a need for organization the basic need think and answer why could not uh, le let's say mark zuckerberg create facebook on his own he created the basic idea but why is he taking so many people on board to run that company yeshu says one person cannot handle everything yes you are right correct om one person cannot look after all the things you need a lot of people so when the scale goes up yes so when the scale goes up you will need so many people to do your job one person cannot do everything right so that is why people who cannot achieve everything on their own they form an organization they bring in the people together and work towards the goal right so take facebook for example mark zuckerberg started it off but now it is employing millions of people yes so that they all have the same objective to grow meta now it's facebook has become meta so now they are trying the objective is to grow meta in the different areas which they are working on okay so organizations can achieve results which individuals cannot achieve by themselves so do you think if mark zuckerberg would have worked on his own he would have grown it into the facebook into the company which it is now no it would not have been possible had he not brought a lot of different people with different specializations on board right so we will now move on to the next slide what have we studied here we have studied the meaning of organization what are the characteristics of organization and what is the need of having an organization right now let's do some activity it's just some brainstorming little bits of activities we will keep doing in the class so that you all remain active so list ways in which organizations can achieve results that individuals cannot achieve by themselves so right we just uh, explained understood that this is the need for having an organization now list down some ways some activities which you think an individual cannot do by himself think what all these activities could be just present your thoughts what comes to your mind
Rashida says different people have different skills. Okay, give some examples. Explain using examples. You are right. What you are thinking is right. Absolutely correct. How an organization is helping them out? What exactly it is doing? It has brought people with different specializations. Very good point, Krishnan. Organizations enable synergy. Very good point. Others, what do you think? We have brought different people on the board. How it is going to help? Yashu says productivity will be more. Yes, you are right. Because there will be different people who are working on the same thing together, different aspects of the same thing together. And the result, the output will be coming out faster than what if only a single person was working on it. Yes, that is how the productivity increases. Correct. So, Rashida uh, says one person may not be able to procure all the resources needed by himself. Yes. So, you will have a team who will look, look into the, for example, you are manufacturing a car. So, for that, you will have a team in the procurement department. Something some uh, will be procured by this team. Within this team, who will be doing the uh, order placement? Who will be managing the delivery of the product? So, like that. There are a lot of things to do in an organization. So if you are having more people on the board, you can diversify their work. Yes. Very good. Uh, very good point by Satya Kosh. Working with others enable you to pool your ideas and see the problems from different perspectives. You know, more the heads which are brainstorming, the better ideas that will come out of it. Yes. Now, let's see what the model answer is. You all have covered the correct points here. So, I will be sharing across this PPT and this Excel file uh, with you. So, you will have it as your own reference point. Right? So, ways in which organizations can achieve the results. Krishnam says organizations save time. Yes, you are saving your time. Very good. Om says in organization, every people have different point of view and skills by which everyone has their opinions yes you are correct now let's read what the book says organizations overcome people's individual limitations whether physical or intellectual now let's let's uh, think of an example how many hours do you have in a day each one of you you have 24 hours per day correct now when 100 people who have formed an organization each day they are having 2400 hours to their disposal yes so just one day you are increasing your productivity so into 100 times because now you have got 100 brains working on that same goal yes so your individual capacity it will not allow you to go beyond on that 24 hours right so you need to bring in more people on the board someone will do the accounting someone will do the purchase like that so you have your own limitations you cannot extend your own day beyond 24 hours so you're bringing in people you're increasing the working hours that is what is known as hours working hours or labor hours right so organizations overcome people's individual limitations whether physical or intellectual okay physical i've told you so you always have see if you are uh, talking of a labor who is in the construction industry so he will have his own physical limitation he cannot work on keep on working endlessly you'll have to bring in a lot of construction workers to complete the task so you have physical and intellectual limitations which can be overcome if you are bringing in a people, lot of people together organizations enable people to specialize in what they do best yes uh, so you are good at something you will be doing that and that is how you're contributing to the company organizations save time because people can work together and do two aspects of different tasks at the same time i told you right you're working on one project but so many people are working together so it will get uh, completed sooner yes organizations accumulate and share knowledge now imagine a company for example 
ITC, right? Now, ITC has been in existence for so many years. Now, let, uh, let's not talk about ITC. Let's talk about Coca-Cola, right? So, you must know about the uh, idea, right? Coca-Cola's secret ingredient is uh, known only to the two people in the company, yes? So, these two people, they keep on passing on that knowledge year after year to the ex uh, heads, so they have accumulated this knowledge over the years. So because it was in the company form, the knowledge could be shared across. If the person who invented Coca-Cola, he would have retained it with himself, the company would have died just after he died. But because it was in the corporate structure, he could accumulate and share that knowledge and the company is in existence even now. Yes. That is how organizations are doing something which individuals cannot. Yes, you must know that people have their limited life, 70, 80 years, but companies, they live on forever. Yes, the going concern concept. They are going on forever, right? That, that is what is particular to organizations. And the final point, uh, someone pointed out, organizations enable synergy. So, you do not, you're not wasting your time. You have got so many people working. So you will ensure that one, what one person is doing, it is not getting repeated by another person. Yes. So that is how organizations enable synergy. Am I clear? You want, and any one of you want to pitch in more points, what you feel is organization is doing over and above what an individual can do. Now we are good to go ahead, then I'll come back to the deck now. Any questions? They just understood the basics of an organization now. No, now I believe, I hope you understand the differentiation between people and the organization and how organizations are superior to individual people. So we just, just studied those five points. It can go on forever. It can create synergies. It can create specializations. So like that, organizations have more superior things than an individual himself. Okay. Now we have studied that how organizations have some common things, right? In this, in this slide, what all organizations have in common we have studied? But within this organization, right, right? So we have FMCG industry. We have so many uh, companies working in that. So ITC, Nestle, Dabur. So these all organizations, they are in FMCG industry. But do you think they are exactly ditto copies of each other? No. They all have some different attributes to them. What could be different is what we are going to study now. So within the organizations, uh, you know, uh, the common uh, criteria of organizations, there could be some points which make them different from each other. Yes. So what are these points? Number one, ownership, private sector versus public sector. Okay. So you, do you uh, know about the private sector companies and the public sector companies? Any idea? What do you think is private and public? What do you understand by private organizations? What are public organizations? Yeshu says private company has less capital than public. Okay. Okay. I accept that. Public organization is government organization. Yes. So Aman uh, has uh, pointed out in the right direction. So public organizations now. They normally mean where the government has invested. Correct. So private organizations are owned by individuals. Public sector, they are uh, having their funding from the government. Okay. So ownership. So ownership in private sector will be with individuals. Whereas in public sector. Give me an example of a public sector company. Quickly think, think. Private sector, I'm sure you all can think. Reliance, I see so many companies. Public sector, yes. So, Aman says Coal India. Om says ONGC. Yes. 
uh, Rashita says BSNL. So these are all government companies. These are all public e sector enterprises. IRCTC, very good. So these are public sector. Now I think you can bridge the gap that what is private sector and what is public sector. Okay. Next is control owners versus managers. Now think of the tea shop next to your home. In your locality, you might be having a tea shop, right? And think of Reliance. Who is controlling each of them? Who is controlling the tea shop? The owner himself is controlling it. The one who is making the tea, he is controlling his own shop. Yes. Whereas in case of Reliance, don't you think, Achha, do you think uh, Mr. Ambani is managing everything in, is on his own? No. He has got managers who will be doing their tasks. So they are controlling. So there will be someone called purchase manager. There will be someone called production manager, someone called accounts manager. So like that, the control is distributed between a lot of people. So for the tea shop, the owner is the controller. For a company like Reliance, managers are the controllers. Correct? Next is activity. So I, what are we discussing first? always have that in mind. What are we discussing? We are discussing how different there are different types of organizations. So please understand that T-Shop is also an organization. You might be having two different, two, three different people who are actually servicing the clients, the servicing the customers who are coming to the T-Shop. So that is also an organization. It's not like big companies only are organizations. The T-Shop is also an example of an organization. And now what are we studying? How different type of organizations there are. So activity. Now within activity, we have manufacturing and service organizations. Give me examples of both the types of organization. Yeshu has given that before I even I asked. So Yeshu says Uber is a service company. Toyota is a manufacturing company. Very good. Others, give me more examples of manufacturing and service organizations. HUL is manufacturing, TCS is services. Um, very good. So now, now I understand you have some basic idea about manufacturing and service organization. So service organizations, they are not, uh, you know, selling out, coming in the market and selling any product, any physical product is not what they're selling. They're selling out the services. So services example, another, another is VLCC. So you go to a salon, you are getting their services. VLCC is also, also an organization, right? So these are the different type of activities organizations can perform. Very good. Profit versus non-profit orientation. Right. So some companies, they are only meant. So most of the private sector companies, they are only meant for earning the profits. Yes. Whereas there can be some non-profit organizations also. Do you know some NGOs, uh, the non-profit non organizations, NPOs? Give me examples if you know. Very good. Yeshu says Helpage India. Aman says being human. Okay. Correct. Yes, so there are a lot of organizations, you know, uh, care is there, okay, uh, you know, it's for child helpline, a lot of uh, non-profit um, organizations there are there who are, who have their objectives only to ensure that the society is uplifted, you know, so there are a lot of helpline numbers, uh, like Help Page India, so it is taking care of the elderly people in the uh, country, Red Cross, yes. So whenever there is a disaster, Red Cross Society comes into action. Yes, these are the organizations which are not there for profit. They are not making any profit. They are just meant for services. They are funded by different people so that their organization keeps on going. Any type of organization, be it profit, be it non-profit, they will need money to function, right? So these non-profit organizations, they get funding. So they get grants and sources like that to, so that they can also perform their functions. Then. Uh, legal form, legal form is limited company versus partnership. So there can be a lot of forms. I've just listed out two here. So limited company is, you now understand company structure. Partnership is, you will have a partnership deed in place. Two, three different people um, are coming together to form a partnership and do the business. There can be HUF, right? There can be trusts. So the legal form can be multiple. Okay. Size. So some of the organizations, they will be very small, family-funded sort of businesses. Whereas there can be some multinational companies like Coca-Cola, as we were discussing. So it is an MNC. It is there in almost every country on the, con 
on the globe so it is a multinational corporation whereas the tea shop in your society that is a very small family business so only two three people are managing that so size of organizations can be different sources of finance as i was discussing different type of organizations have different sources of finance for example companies how can so how can they take money they will have uh, shareholders who will give them share, uh, you know money against the issue of shares there will be banks who will lend them there can also be government funding so if you are in some noble cause the government will also fund your operation so that is known as government grants so there can be different sources of finance for different type of organizations some companies can be 100% um, share funded 100% bank funded 100% government funding or a mixture of these different type of sources of finance yes yes om so debentures is another source of finance so mostly we normally categorize our uh, sources of finance into two different parts it is equity or debt right Most, uh, so that is the overall classification but then there can be sub classifications within them okay technology use of technology complexity of production now uh, let's understand so a company like tcs they will be using the most advanced technology possible yes yeah. but imagine that tea shop it is not using any technology it is just uh, you know uh, dependent on the services it is providing so the type of technology each organization uses is also different correct so we have studied so many different heads now do you understand organizations although they all can be clubbed together but within them also there can be different types there can be profit oriented or non profit oriented organizations there can be limited companies there can be partnerships so like that within the organizations also we have different types am i clear you want me to discuss any other uh, any of these points again i can do that you want to give more examples if uh, you know that is also welcome aman says he is clear others rashita says he is clear these are all basic things which you know, need to know about organizations and now let me tell you how they are going to be important for your exams so sometimes they will give you example of what a company is doing and you'll have to identify which whether it falls under profit or the non profit orientation so that is why it is important to know these types of things okay now we are going further into details as to what different type of industries are there okay so i've given some examples here itself so that we can discuss about them now uh, so first industry is agriculture okay so what will be the activity which this company will be doing it will be processing it will be producing first so i have given an example of godrej agrovet do you know examples of more agriculture companies so agriculture now you understand now what will it be doing it will be producing so let's say tea so there is a company known as bombay burma trading corporation it is also listed bbtc now what does it do it is in the tea and coffee manufacturing so it has got uh, plantations in kurg karnataka so what they do is that they are involved only in the production and processing of food for example tata tea that is also an agriculture company because it is involved in tea manufacturing yes so that is the example of a company in agriculture industry rallies yes so they are in the syrup industry so they are processing syrup out of processing of rose correct good example next manufacturing very simple now you can give me endless examples here tell me what all are your favorite examples for manufacturing what which companies are involved in manufacturing and what do they manufacture tell me together aman says tata consumers very good think more tata steel yes then you can say uh, tesla who is into manufacturing of cars yashu says hyundai automobiles correct apple apple is so apple is manufacturing phones yes you all are right so there are endless examples of manufacturing industries so what what do they do they acquire some raw materials correct so let's see what the activity is what they are doing so they acquire raw materials 
and by the application of labor and technology they are turning it into a car correct so hyundai automobiles uh, someone said so what are they doing they are acquiring all the raw materials so what could be the raw material for these companies it could be steel it could be tires so what are they doing they are assembling the different parts together they are applying their own skilled labor on it so that they turn it into a car correct that is what a manufacturing company does i give the example of it extractive raw materials so you know na there are a lot of companies who are involved in mining okay what are they doing they are extracting the raw materials from the mother earth and they are doing something material out of it they are providing it to the industry yes so one of the examples is vedanta so vedanta is involved in the extractions of minerals and uh, alloys from the earth and then they are uh, processing it and selling it out do you know more examples like uh, of uh, mining companies or who are into extracting i hope now you all can see when you are discussing it with example now your horizon mind horizon opens up you think yes these are the companies which are there this is what they do think companies in the mining industry coal india correct coal india is involved in the mining of coal hindal co very good om so these are the companies in the mining industry energy so what does energy company do we are discussing the different industries in which a company can operate okay it's not like there are only manufacturing company there are different all uh, so, uh, you know different sorts of companies in the market energy company what do they do they convert one resource into another for example coal is converted into electricity adani power adani power power is involved in the distribution of electricity yes give me more examples of energy companies suzlon okay om or others nhpc uh is it the hydro power company dushan that uh, aman say startup power yes so these are all different companies who are involved in converting one source so hydro power company what does it do it takes water ntpc is their national thermal power corporation yes so what does it do it takes coal it converts it into electricity it takes hydro power it converts into electricity so that is what these different type of companies do their energy based companies okay distribution companies delivering goods to the end customer so the first example is today in the today's world is e cart it e cart is, has been delivering the products to your door step delivery based companies yes give me more examples a lot of more examples are there om says ecom express yes amazon has their own delivery partner krishnam says yes so these companies are involved see amazon is an e-commerce company they have their delivery partners delivery is a company correct blue dot yes i was looking for blue dot now no one called it blue dot om says blue dot so blue dot is that one company who is delivering your parcels from one place to another so these are all the redistribution type of companies track on is there yes next is intellectual production so what do these intellectual companies do they are producing softwares they are producing films they are producing music so these are also different types of organizations right yes so i have given the example of infosys you can give endless examples here now i am assuming tcs is going to come i am assuming wipro is going to come tech mahindra yes others so there are a lot of it companies which they are which are involved in producing the intellectual property so what you need to understand here what are we discussing is what see there are endless list of industries even the list which i have given here is not exhaustive there can be different industries also so we are just discussing what all different types of industries are there service industry so service industry it could be axis bank yes they are in the banking service yes soft bank is there so what does soft bank do it is into investments then uh, we also have advertising firms we have accountancy firms like the big four kpmg pwc these are all what are they doing they are providing the services yes so these are all service industries ey so now you understand there are different industries and we can classify the all the companies we know into one of these industries 
okay then again we can add another category here ecom so ecom you will say flipkart amazon mintra like that so you can give those examples what do they do they are in the marketplace business they are bringing up together different um, marketplace sellers and then they are selling it to the end customer yes vishu is an example of an ecom company okay now we are going to do an activity here so that is what you have to do you have to tell me example of this type of organizations okay so we are uh, we have studied the different industries here i gave you the examples and you be discuss similarly we are going to discuss the different types of organizations here commercial organization commercial is profit making companies give me examples of so you can give endless here lot of companies are most of the companies are there in the commercial in the, uh, sector only itc reliance all of them they are in the commercial business okay next not for profit not for profit also we have discussed once help page india someone said then child care is there okay not for profit public sector is something we have already discussed so what is that bpcl is there ongc is there iictc is there right charity companies do you know someone said an example of charity being human yes see they are similar not for profit and charity they are similar charity is basically you are donating correct you are whatever you are making you are donating but not for profit for example let's take the example of red cross society they are not donating their money they are providing their services in the difficult times when even the private sector will take away go away right so that is the difference between not for profit and charity but yes they are similar you can even say you know charity firms are also not uh, not for profit firms is that okay yashu yeah then trade unions do you know trade unions every city has their own trade union so delhi will have their own trade union yes krishnan the aim for not for profit is not to earn profit but to provide their services in the critical times trade unions yes you all must be knowing local authorities tell me what is the local authority of delhi we have one delhi guy na tell us what's the name of the delhi local authority who is managing the uh, cleanliness of your city are you guys there municipal corporation is a local authority yes an example will uh, will be municipal corporation of delhi which we know call as mcd yes each city has their so guwahati has your guwahati municipal corporation like that each city will have their correct kolkata municipal corporation kasa green says amit yes so these are the different local authorities which are there so these are also organizations next ngo we have studied it it's the similar as the charity and you can say that red cross is a uh, ngo then cooperative societies here i'm looking for good examples tell me very good amul says om amul is a cooperative society do you know these uh, amul uh, who, which was started by varghese kurain what he did he brought together the different farmers of anand village uh, so amul is in anand it's a place in gujarat so he brought together the farmers of that village and started off such a big organization and that is amul right so likewise we also have nandini milk <laughs> yes she was amul was the only example i knew yes that's the most common example but we also have cooperative society banks which you might have heard of so what do they do they pool the money from the members okay so like uh, apex bank if you would have heard that is an example of a cooperative society it's a cooperative bank so that is how what they do the members contribute to the pool of funds they contribute their services and then run the organization together whatever profit they make that is distributed and in case of amul uh, if i'm not wrong 
ninety percent of the profits, whichever comes to the uh, to the company, is distributed as profits within the uh, dairy farmers. So that is how cooperative societies work. And these are for the upliftment of the members. There are a lot of educational societies also which are set up as cooperatives. So the people will be coming together, studying, sharing their uh, educational resources, and doing their work. Okay. So that is how we have studied the different types of organization. We have studied the different industries of an organization. We have studied how different organizations can be, like uh, in terms of our ownership, control, activity, right? So these are the different aspects. You know, what the whole idea of this chapter is, is to make you aware that these all are the companies. These, it can be fitted into this category. This is how they are sourced. Like that, okay. Just to get you abreast of all the different types which is there in the uh, market. So that was the activity too, also which we just did. So for the above categories of the organization, we have already completed that. Now comes the difference between. Now we are going into more details of each of these types. Okay, what are the differences between profit and not for profit? I'm sure first. Some the first one which is coming out is the goal. The goal of profit companies to earn profit. The goal of non-profit organization is not to make profit but to provide their goods and services. Tell me more differences. Think in depth now. We know all of us know that basic difference that what is the goal of each of these. But think more. Their work, okay. Very good, yes, true. That's what I was think, uh, waiting for. What their source of money is? Yeshu yeah, says NPO. They get donations. Yes. How do they otherwise function if they're not making any money? How will they work function? So they get donations to do their work. So their source of funding is different. So for a profit-based organization, the source of funding will be. Of course, the shareholders and debt is there, but for the normal functioning, it will be the revenue which they are generating by performing their uh, work. Whereas for NPOs, it will be the donation which the people give to them, which the government gives to them, right? So that is the first point of difference between profit and non-profit organization, and that is the source of funding. Very good. Next, we have already discussed goal. Goal of a profit-based uh, company is to maximize the shareholders wealth. So there is this topic in financial management that the goal of a business is not just to maximize the profit, but it is to maximize the shareholders wealth. Okay, so there is a difference between the two. See, uh, shareholders wealth is dependent upon the value of the company, and value of the company is of course de derived from the profits. But also from different aspects like the market share. For example, as we were discussing about Flipkart, now Flipkart is not in profit, but still it has value, right? How so? How does that value arise? Because of the market it has created for itself. Well, yes. So that, there is a difference between maximizing shareholders' wealth and to earn profits. So the primary goal. Please tattoo this on your forehead. I'm telling you, primary goal of a profit company is not just to earn profit, but to maximize the shareholders wealth so for not for profit organization for it is the provision of goods and services satikosh says public sector organizations are owned controlled and managed by the government in private sector there is no government interference yes you are right so first but we are discussing about profit and not for profit what you are telling us is the next topic we are going to discuss and that is public sector and private sector Okay, yes. So let's close off this topic with for profit and NPO. So here, of course, the technology usage will also be different. So that is also one of the points of differentiation. Profit companies will use a very advanced level of technology, whereas NPOs they will be using you know subtly low levels of technology because that is not what their core area is. Okay, so that is the difference between profit and not profit organizations. Now, can you tell me the difference between private and public sector? Satya Kosh has already listed his own differentiation that in the public sector there is involvement of the government. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and in the private sector, it will be run by the private individuals. 
Yes, Krishna. You are correct. I hope we have already covered this topic, public sector and private sector, so we can move on with this now. Now what you have to do, this is an activity which you have to do. Identify the advantages and disadvantages of using public sector organizations. So basically, what are the benefits and demerits of public sector organizations? Krishnam says the advantages listed on stock exchange, okay, and economies of scale. Krishnam uh, won't accept this as an advantage of a public sector organization because, see, first you need to understand what is the private sector and public sector. Public sector is the one which is run by the government. Private sector can also use make use of uh, economies of scale. Imagine Reliance Industry, it is in the private sector. But still, it is having economies of scale because it is operating at such a large scale, right? So, uh, those two advantages are not really the advantages of public sector organization. Think more. Om says disadvantage is less efficiency, bureaucracy, and corruption. Absolutely correct. So they, these are the advantages of government organizations. You, your work gets stuck, you are stuck forever, right? So, but yes, the governments are actually coming up to the levels of private organizations and they're improving their efficiency. But yes, there's a very long way to go. Still, they are suffering from these disadvantages. Then Aman says, public companies also listed on the stock exchange. Yes, public as well as private, both are listed, no? Like, uh, private take the example of Reliance, public take the example of BPCL, both, one of them is private, another is public, but both of them are listed on the stock exchange. Tushar says advantage is job security. Okay, I'll take that. Paris says advantages work towards social welfare. Very good. Um, very good point by Rashta. So they work towards social welfare. So there is no price discrimination. Now imagine so in our country, in India, there are predominantly there are two players in telecom, right? One is Geo and one is uh, uh, three players, sorry. One is uh, Geo, another is uh, Airtel, and another is Vodafone Idea. But what is the need of keeping BSNL then? If these three companies can manage their work, why is the government interested in keeping BSNL? Can someone give me the reason? Why didn't the government choose to keep, if it is, uh, you know, you must be knowing BSNL is such a big organization. Amman says BSNL plans are very low cost. Okay. Others, why do you think uh, government decided to keep uh, BSNL, although the private players are managing their work so perfectly well? Krishnam, I think you are getting confused somewhere. You have mentioned that shares can be bought and sold in public company. What you are talking about is private and public company. What we are discussing is private sector and public sector. These are both different concepts. So public sector, na, it talks about the government organizations. What you are talking about is the publicly listed companies. So that is where I think you are getting confused, but don't be. Private and public companies are different. Private sector and public sector companies are different. Are you clear, Krishna? Yes. 
then om says why are they keeping bsnl om says because if they close it it may cause loss of many jobs and by keeping it running they can take advantage of increase in the plants by other companies okay aman says because all people cannot afford high price recharge that's why yeshu has pointed out the correct reason because they will provide services in emergencies i i'll elaborate on this point more let me read what others have said uh, rashita says to avoid customer exploitation by very high price prices that is also a correct point very good and yeshu says coverage is also more. now i will uh, tell you the reason why the <coughs> government chose to keep uh, bsnl firstly in case of national emergencies see communication is of extreme importance be it a, a warning of any natural disaster or be it of any wars or you know so you can now understand uh, relate with uh, this uh, russia and ukraine war right so in these situations communication becomes extremely critical okay now you must also be knowing that in all the government departments be it the defense ministry be it um, the home affairs department all of them they can they continue to use bsnl why because they cannot rely on private companies what if i'm just speculating here talking very hypothetical what if reliance uh, geo it is um, hacked or it is uh, intentionally sharing out these uh, important bits of information which is of so critical nature and it is leaking out to another uh, to the uh, enemy country for example i'm just talking so therefore for these critical lines of operations now where you can not rely on private players government will not take away the public player and that is the reason the primary reason for keeping the uh, bsnl is because they want to make sure that in extreme emergency situations or in some critical situations private sector does not give away the important in critical information about the country okay and of course the operational reasons are also there so that the private players do not exploit the customers by increasing their prices incessantly right so these are the different uh, reasons why bsnl was kept but coming back to the question all of you gave out very good reasoning here about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of public sector organizations but always remember as i have already clarified to krishnam public sector and private sector is different and public and private companies are different i hope that is clear to all is it okay or should i clear uh, you know talk about it more i've already explained public companies are those companies which are listed we will talk about these uh, in more details no worries but uh, public companies are listed companies private companies are privately owned public sector companies are those companies which are funded by government okay and they work in the public domain they are working for the public uh, welfare yes and which are also very critical for the nation whereas private companies they earn for the sole motive of earning profits and they are mostly owned by individuals that is the two different types of public and private which we are discussing here what we are discussing is private and public sector organizations okay now you all have very beautifully covered the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of public sector organization now let's read what the model answer is okay right so advantage is economies of scale so yes one of you have also pointed out economies of skill but it is also there for private companies so advantages is economies of skill then next is fill the gap left by private sector now we were discussing about bsnl right so what is it doing private sector cannot be relied upon in extreme situations so that is where bsnl has been put it is only filling the gap which is left by the private sector next which uh, all of you also said about bsnl is that cheaper service so available to a significant proportion of society now can you tell me why did government choose to keep ircpc to itself and not privatize it because again the um, again also we have this example of airlines 
so till now we were having air india why what was the need so it was to ensure that in difficult situations whatever happens we have something the government has something to rely upon which is their own so be it traveling be it communication these are all critical pieces of information uh, pieces for a country that is why they keep them to themselves and next cheaper services yes so irctc for you all know uh, traveling uh, train fares they are very low so that it is affordable and feasible for the larger part of the society and not just for the richer folks are we clear with the advantages have you all understood this okay great and what are the disadvantages you some of you pointed out perfectly well bureaucracy corruptions inefficiency that is what is given here so there is government influence on funding on run so what happens when that happens it gets it becomes a legard you have to you remain stuck in that and inefficiencies are not addressed so we know about how sbi works you know there are a lot of memes out there of it so why does that happen because the inefficiencies are not getting addressed yes so that is the disadvantage of a public sector company clear so now i'll come back to the deck see whenever we are discussing through examples now it becomes more relatable so that is why i'm giving you and asking you for example so that you also remain in work now we are going to discuss about the company structure okay what were we discussing till now did we enter into private and public till now no we I, we just got a little off track and that is where i explained to you the difference between private and public companies till now we were discussing about private sector and public sector companies now within the companies we are discussing about going to discuss about private and public companies are we clear in our head i want me to discuss any point again okay great now we are going to study about the companies so limited liability why uh, anyone aware why we call companies limited liability companies just checking your knowledge even if you don't know it's okay krishnan says limited liability companies have separate legal entity yes absolutely correct they have their own uh, entity you know you cannot say that the director so the directors they are basically running the company right the shareholders have funded the company but understand company the institution of company okay then that is what is known as separate legal entity now tell me why do we call them limited liability krishnam says ownership and control are separated yes yes yashu says in case of insolvency the amount of capital invested will be recovered no that's incorrect that doesn't happen for share capital yashu if uh, a company goes into insolvency shareholders get their money in the last if there is any money left so it is not possible that you will get your money uh, only the capital invest will get recovered that's not the case aman says the liability of members is limited to what they have invested that yes that is what i was looking for rashita says because shareholders are liable only up to their interest in the company and their private assets can't be used perfectly well that is what i was looking correct krishna yes so what, why do we call limit companies as limited liability companies is because as shareholders so for example you have invested in 100 shares of reliance company currently trading at around 2500 rupees okay so you have invested that money 2 lakh 50000 rupees in reliance for example reliance goes into liquidation do you think the people who are in uh, the liquidators 
they will come to you asking for your personal uh, assets just because you invested in the 100 shares of reliance company can they come and take away your uh, home's furniture they can take away your uh, your own money <laughs> no and that is the reason we call them limited liability so your liability towards reliance is limited to 250000 rupees okay they cannot ask for more if the company goes into liquidation that is the maximum you can lose your liability is limited to 250000 rupees they cannot come and take away your private assets okay so limited liability companies denoted by x limited or x plc in the uk so that is see we are um, we need to understand we are in the international curriculum now so you will sometimes find references of uk okay so in india also what do we have x limited and x private limited correct in the uk it's x limited or x plc so plc is the private limited companies in uh, plc is uh, the public limited companies in uk these are separate legal entity from their owners so some one of you pointed out yes that the entity the entity of a company is different from its shareholders you cannot say owner and company is one and the same no they have their own different identities the key advantage as we have discussed is that the shareholders liability is limited to the amount they have invested in that company okay so this is the critical and the most important advantage of being in the company form if you are the shareholder your liability is restricted other notable advantages of a limited see limited and plc they are used interchangeably because they mean one and the same thing so the notable advantages of a limited company are what do you understand by limited company first tell me the limited company means private company private limited companies they are limited these are private companies plc is used so in india what do we call we call x private limited if it is a private company but in uk it is called x limited for public companies in india we call x limited okay there is in uk they call it as x plc inc is also incorporated yes but is certain years so private will be limited public will be be it a limited yani ki public what are the advantages of a company form of institution number 1 more money is available for investment from shareholders okay so if you have uh, formed a company there is no limit to the amount of money you can raise right because if you are a growing company there will be people willing to put their money in your company yes so there is no limit so more money is available for investment from shareholders yes uh, so now think of a what you should think of when you are reading these advantages is compare it with a proprietorship concern compare it think of proprietorship can it raise unlimited money it cannot raise unlimited money it will have to take loans if it wants money because your own capital will be restricted am i right can you follow this yes rashita so in compare it with a proprietorship so in a, a public company or be it a private company you can in, take on any number of shareholders and you can club their to pool their money together but in case of a proprietorship your own money will be limited you cannot raise unlimited money okay next easier to raise capital from banks and other lenders so why does it happen you know sometimes if uh, some if you were, were have been involved in uh, these aspects on a practical level you will know that if 
you are borrowing is exceeding a certain amount now banks they will force you they will ask you not force you they will ask you to get converted into corporate form why does it happen because once you are in the corporate form you have to do so many uh, you know diligence that banks become assured that at least their money is in safe hands okay so that is why they ask you to get converted into corporate form because you will have to do so many filings so many registrations that you yourself will always be on the right try to be on the right track okay rather than giving money to a sole proprietor so sole proprietor he doesn't have any legal recognition he just has his own owner's pan that is the own, only recognition which he has so banks have less faith on a sole proprietor than they have for a company and that is why it becomes easier for companies to raise capital from banks and other lenders does this point make sense in your mind you should always compare company versus proprietorship so uh, definitely a company form will be easy to get money okay then the third point of advantage is ownership and control are legally separated investors need not run the money now okay now think of it um in reliance there will be millions of investors now imagine all these investors they want to manage the company you are having 100 shares and you will say no i i also want to manage the company but is that possible do you do you manage the company no you have just invested your money and your role ends there management of the company is in the hands of some different people so these different investors they pooled their money that is their job running the business is the job of another person yes of the directors primarily when they have directors have different reporties so like that so management and ownership are in different hands so you do what you are best at you have money you invest it you have the skills manage the company so best of the functions are working together and that is how a public com- a limited company or a private limited company they are better off than a sole proprietorship com- uh, organization okay so investors need not take the the money they have invested the money they are they have to understand that the company is in the safe hands of the managers and it will give them better wealth in the future but if we remove the rosy lenses and look at the disadvantages we will find out there are some disadvantages too first greater administrative burden and cost especially for legal entities now that you have entered the professional qualification of acca you will realize that and even you will learn these things that so many filings have to be done for listed entities for example if you are listed on the national stock exchange now you have to file quarterly annual audit uh, quarterly audited financial statements with the stock exchange and you have to file so many forms even if you are changing your directors you have to file a form if your director is retiring you have to file a form director's address is changing you have to file a form so many administrative compliances are there if you are especially if you are listed then there is more but even if you are just a private company still there are endless compliances you have to do okay so greater administrative burden and with the burden comes cost auditors will ask for fees professionals will ask for fees so that is where there is a disadvantage if you are in the corporate form of business clear and second disadvantage is lack of privacy as anyone can download the financial statements and other public data do you know that the financial statements of all the listed companies are mandatorily required to be published on the websites of the company do you know about this if i want to see the audited financial statements of reliance i can simply go to their website and download the financial statements yes have you ever looked at the financial statements have you ever looked at the annual report of a company yes she says no aman says yes so many yes and no's 
okay so this is your homework for the day after the class is done just any random company any company you like any listed company i'm talking about okay any listed company uh, in india go to their website download their annual report it's a very big report i cannot obviously ask you to read through that report but at least have a glimpse of it so many interesting things are there you know what they have done in the last year what they think of doing in the coming years take any company you like and just download the statement and read you will see their assets run into crores of rupees so their revenue their um, capital so that is how you will become uh, you know aware about the company so take it as a homework do download any report and read it okay anything any part you like just skim through it have a glimpse of what all is there it's very attractive also they put in a lot of efforts in preparing the annual return uh, annual report so do take some time and read those statements okay so yes what i was saying is these financial statements these are publicly uh, published okay so you and me anyone who wants to know about the company can download this information and know about the company okay so for example um itc and dabur they are competitors in the fmcg business so they both have to publish their results itc can read dabur's results dabur can read itc's results so both of them they are aware of each other's businesses so there is no privacy or in res with respect to the amount of revenue one company is making with respect to the lender of a company so it will give out the details who has lent out the money sbi has given money to dabur or whatever the case may be all the details they can become available in the public domain so that is the disadvantage of a company but do you think sole proprietors do you think the tea shop owner publishes his results to anyone no he doesn't have to whatever he earns he keeps it he doesn't have to doesn't have to disclose that information to anyone but private companies yes they have to clear so that is the disadvantage of a company okay that was these advantages and disadvantages were mostly applicable for both private companies and public companies now we are going to learn about the two different types of limited companies so both private as well as com public companies both of them are limited companies okay even in private companies your capital your liability is restricted to the amount you have invested as shares even if the private company is going into liquidation they will not come and take away your uh, private assets okay same goes for public so both of them are limited liability companies but yes because of the different type of ownership they have some differentiations so let's understand what is the difference between private limited and in uk private is known as limited companies public limited companies are known as plc companies clear so private companies are usually owned by a small number of people family members and their shares are not easily transferable usually <coughs> some of you might even be having some private companies of your own family right so you must be knowing you cannot share uh, sell your shares so easily uh, whatever has been invested remains invested for the long term you cannot uh, trade the shares very easily right in private companies whereas in public companies See, whenever we are investing in the Bombay Stock Exchange or in the National Stock Exchange, what are we doing? We are basically trading the shares, right? Someone is selling it, another one is buying it. So this is known as to all. I lost my internet connection in between. Can you please type in a yes if you can hear me? okay great so thank you yeah so what we were discussing is the two types of companies which are there and that is uh, private companies and the public companies private companies they are usually owned by a small number of people whereas jamal you are not able to hear us uh, others can hear me am i audible to all jamal uh, can you please uh, check again
please join us again it's uh, okay from my end yeah thanks aman so in private companies in the private companies it is owned by a small number of people right so the family members and the shares cannot be transferred easily as compared to a public company where the shares are easily transferable so when we are purchasing the shares from the share market what are we doing we are basically trading in the shares right so that is what happens in if you are incorporated as a public limited company second point is shares of public companies will usually be traded on a stock exchange something we have discussed and um, the directors of a public company are less likely to hold a significant shareholding in the company so you might be aware uh, if you have dealt with these things at a practical level that in case of private companies now directors are mostly the shareholders also they derive their remuneration from their own profits that is how it normally functions whereas in public companies it doesn't happen so public companies the directors they normally do not have so much of shareholding they are uh, they do have some shareholding but not much have is of private limited companies okay so that is the difference between private limited companies and public limited companies are we clear clear and also most important is the advantage and disadvantage of limit uh, of limited liability companies okay great great if you still want to see some things might not get covered in the slides but just because of your normal business understanding you might have some queries in your head now always feel free to post them see i have work experience in private corporate so i can always share my uh, you know direct experience in those companies even uh, the awareness of the market as a whole i have uh, those details with me so if you ever have any queries regarding the topics we are covering you can always post it and we can discuss that okay next slide is an activity now please get up we'll be doing something together florence nightingale runs a successful and growing small business as a sole trader so she is a sole proprietor she wish wishes to expand the business and has acquired skachari limited she has she has acquired so she was in sole proprietorship before now she has acquired skachari limited a small private limited company in the same line so she was doing some business and she has acquired another company in the same line after the acquisition she runs the two businesses as if they were in one operation making no distinction between them what she has done she was running some business she acquired a private company she has started running both of them without making any distinction between the two so if she is she was purchasing for her own business earlier as a sole proprietor she is also considering it as a purchase for for the company is it a correct thing to do the requirement is what is the legal form of the business she is running is she doing the right thing no yes she says no but what is she doing so what will you recommend to her what will you tell her if she is not doing the correct thing what will you suggest as a professional to her think yeah either you will tell her to keep the proprietorship business or you will uh, tell her to keep the company so what will you tell her yashu yes, says treat the other companies pretty good para says convert into a single private company very good aman says she uh, he should have to tell that which is public or which is private company no this question is not about public or private company aman this question is about sole proprietorship and private company read the question again so think again and answer everyone should participate you have to now step into the shoes of a professional who is going to guide her so tell her what you would want her to do om says convert into a single private limited company okay others what do you think 
कृष्णम जाकिया ओके सो यू ऑल वर स्लाइटली इन द करेक्ट डायरेक्शन सो यू ऑल कवर द पॉइंट विच इज देयर इन द मॉडल आंसर आई शो दैट टू यू very good attempt so that is what will happen so once you are in the professional uh, qualification career na you have to start thinking what you would do if you were a professional so that is how you ultimately become a professional right so let's see what the model answer is this is quite a key question for example if suppliers have contracts with scutari limited which is the private company the contract is with the company florence is not legally liable for the company's debts but what she is doing she is treating them both as equals whatever the debts are there for the private company she is treating it she is also treating them as their own similarly if their contracts are with florence they are dealing with her personally they are not dealing with the company right so she has made no distinction but legally that is not allowed so what she has to do which i asked you that she has to make a choice so some of you told she can run the entire business as a sole trader in which scutari limited's assets must be transferred to her okay so the company will sell their assets and also transfer its liabilities to her personal account which she is running as a sole trader okay that is option 1 so what is option 1 convert the entire business into sole trading company sole trading corporation okay second is she can run her entire business as a limited company in which case she would have to share or sell her own personal assets to the company correct okay? so either ways either you use uh, the company form or you use the sole trader format for running your business okay and thirdly she can ensure that the two businesses are legally distinct in their assets liabilities income and expenditure so if she does not want to make a single uh, structure out of the two businesses she needs to understand that both of them are two different entities and she needs to distinguish between the two if the contracts are with the company the contracts remain with the company she cannot use those contracts for her own sole trading business correct this that is how the differentiation has to be made yes jamal you have raised your hand tell me you have a question second point okay so i'll repeat again please explain i i'll do that jamal what does the second point say she can run her entire business as a limited company so what she will do she will have to sell the share, uh, assets which were there in her own private name and also transfer the liabilities to the company so the idea is either you convert all the assets in the sole traders uh, structure or you convert it in the capital structure co company structure so what will you do option 1 if you are following option 1 you will have to sell all the company's assets and liabilities to that sole business sole trader business in the second option if you are converting everything into the corporate form you will have to sell the assets and liabilities of that private form the sole trader form into the company's format is that making sense jamal clear that is what the second point is saying and third is you want to keep both keep both but treat them distinctly keep them legally different am i clear now jamal second point krishnam says clear jamal if you are still not clear please ask me to explain again that is not a problem at all i can explain any number of times if but the thing is you should be clear but the idea is simple if you are running the whole business as a sole proprietor 
then the assets and liabilities of the companies have to be sold to the sole proprietorship business if you are running the business completely as a company the assets and liabilities of the sole proprietor has to be transferred to the company okay and third is you keep them both running together but treat them as distinct entities om is giving an example like apsara and natraj yes so these are two different businesses keep them separate the contracts will be different the receivables will be different for both of them and you cannot merge them together into one if you want to keep them legally separate okay everyone if you have any queries in the topics we have discussed so far you can please post it now or else we will take a pause here and resume my classes tomorrow if you have any queries in the topics we have discussed so far you can post it now and even if it is there in the next class also you can post it no worries no it's not like today's topic has to be clear today you can always post it later so do uh, uh, i will share across these slides with you after tomorrow's class so that once the chapter is done i will share out the final uh, deck with you okay and then you can go through the notes okay thank you so much everyone for your patient listening uh, if you have any feedback to share uh, please do share it in the group and you can let us know uh, jamal tomorrow's class timings will be same uh, from 10 to 1 okay so please do join us at 10 of uh, at 10 o'clock and resume the topics from there okay thank you so much everyone bye bye see you tomorrow